So starting off, I welcome you all to the session, uh, the NASCOM dedicated session for AI, ML and deep learning. Uh, my name is Dhruv Adhikari. I have been in the industry for the past uh, close to right eight plus years, 10 years, if you say. Uh, I'm a Bitspilani alumnus, including a diploma from ISC Bangalore. Uh, I am a very competent uh, uh, deep learning and uh, image processing specialist. Uh, my specific interest lies in hyperspectral image processing, which is basically uh, image resolutions of greater than uh, like 1x, 2x, or say micro imaging or like satellite imaging or x rays uh, or cross modalities. Uh, Currently, I also have an exposure of working with uh, data sets that have trillions of uh, uh, data, specifically US geography. I work with that completely uh, on its entire population of 300 million plus patients. That's my current work with AstraZeneca. So in a nutshell, uh, when people want to enter the data science domain, there's a lot of like resistance, like I'm not a programmer, like how do I enter this domain? what do i do right there there are questions like this or maybe i'm weak in programming that kind of stuff like you understand that abhishek uh, uh, who works with me he is also like mechanical engineer myself electronics engineer so uh, i'm not a computer science background right but the essence of data sciences it is very easy to learn because it focuses on mathematics statistics and the conceptual knowledge i I'm sure many of you are from non-engineering backgrounds or even from engineering backgrounds uh, might be working in different domains like supply chain logistics or you might be working with, uh, I really need to get that. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, can I be excused? Thank you. Just. Uh, I am really sorry about that. So as I was saying, uh, we might be from multiple domains, right? So consider this fact, I work in medical domain. I work with drug discovery. I work with salespeople. Do I look like a salesman or do I uh, actually have an MBBS or an MB MDS degree? No, I don't. But I built my information knowledge on the basis of other people. And that's the beauty of data science you kind of build your logics around them you develop solutions for them so in a nutshell anyone at any time can get into this data science domain and he can just start delivering based on his prior experience so supposedly a salesperson might join data science and he might use the data science algorithms or the predictive modeling part to develop like better leads like out of like 100 uh, people who should i specifically target if you see the trend of the current world, uh, you see Tesla, you see Geo, you see uh, any company like Facebook, Meta. These are not social networking, automobile or like uh, telecom companies. They are data collection companies. They collect your data and they perform analytics on it. You know, like, uh, have you ever given it a thought? Like uh, when you go on Amazon search, like uh, it does give you like recommended products that kind of stuff like data is the key and in the recent years although data science and ml modeling predictive modeling they have been around since the 60s 60s so the neural networks they were developed in the 70s during the cold war era but why the emergence of data science now because india has a very uh, has a great uh, you, a young mindset which is ready to take on the world we have arrived that's what they say. And definitely we have arrived. We know mathematics better than most of our counterparts. That's why we are naturally adept for data science and AI ML domain. No one can deny our software prowesses. We can prototype anything. And with Python, any novice, like with two weeks or three weeks of hard work, he can crack it in. So that's why AI ML has come to fore in India and uh, in the recent years, like with the emergence of NVIDIA, the hardware improvements, anyone can train an AI ML algorithm right now, right? So with 
said uh, with that i will just start off uh, just let me know if you can see my screen uh, is the deck visible yes yes yeah. it is yeah great so what is data science so uh, as i said i have been working with trillion uh, column data sets i have been working with image data sets a lot of things right a lot of things that you might not understand a lot of things you might not know what exactly is data science what encapsulates data science so the first thing the crux of it that is data with the advent of social media with the advent of internet data is everywhere you are generating tremendous trends of environment even when you are like uh, scrolling through reels on instagram you are generating data like data on what kind of reels you like and based on that an algorithm will churn it up and it will give you reels that you like that's how powerful it is so we have the data now data is uh, what entails data science like uh, you have to clean and you have to transform the data not everything is useful right not everything is useful and that is why you will learn like which data to use in different uh, you will learn about cleaning you learn about transformation be it in excel be it in python you will perform exploratory data analysis say like we have a medicine in my general terms and this medicine is generally suited for women so would i be performing an analysis on the entire set of male female and the non binary and whatever genders are there they them pronoun no i won't i'll just be performing the analysis on the female data set so that's part of exploratory data analysis then we model the data we train up a model like uh, based on the data that you have make a decision should i give this medicine to this person or should i not right that's predictive analytics but now does the business understand this language if you go and show to the business that this is my code and this is giving this result no the business won't understand that so visualization and communication that's where your power bi tableau uh, matplotlib all these libraries will come into play because as you go higher up at the chain you need more visual representation right once you have communicated your thought process you deploy the solution you deploy it to run over and over and over again and you let it automate the stuff for you okay then you question why 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 say uh, you acquire a data specifically you model it and then the model does not perform accordingly why it does not perform you question it you include the scientific component of questioning in it and then you again acquire the data like it's a continuously iterative process wherein you continuously try to solve problems again and again and again while automating it okay so that's in crux to data science and there are uh, why is this coming into four play as i was saying as arun was saying it's very much in demand okay we indians have a natural knack of solving problems uh, obviously i won't comment about the salary part but it is highly prestigious data scientists like whenever i go and say like hey i am a data scientist that brings prestige to me because i am not any ordinary software developer and uh, mind it being a software developer is hard in its own way say i wanted to become a java developer i cannot because there are a lot of nuances that i need to learn but with data science my existing acumen my questioning ability that's it i can code in python that's it there is literally no hard work in prototyping except for learning a few basic syntax like how to print how to run a loop that's all i need to know and most of the data scientists like even though data scientists in it companies are recently coming in you will have a lot of academicians who have been doing it for years and academicians we don't like coding that's why we have r and we have python that's it those are the only two packages that we use for programming purposes and every company be it google tensorflow or be it facebook's pytorch or be it any other company that writes its code everyone does it on python itself or on r that's a statistical language but python is the go to language we add business to uh, add value to businesses like as i said like if i am uh, say in my case like uh, i have like 1000 healthcare professionals who do i pitch my product to if i can give the sales person 
an automatic lead of 10 people who are sure shot gonna give you a business of this many millions that's amazing right you simplify people's job you generate more revenue you free up time and uh, 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 research allocations right so coming to this what are the different stages of it what will you be doing like when you get data what should you be doing first there are uh, four stages of it and in companies also we define it as four stages of maturity the first task is descriptive analytics say you have a sensor on the shop floor in a manufacturing plant what does it show it's a temperature sensor 50 degree centigrade right so what is that 50 degree centigrade it's the average operating temperature that's as simple as that that's the descriptive analytics say you take that sensor reading for over one hour you find the mean median and mode the mean will be saying like 51 degree centigrade is the average temperature the mode was 49 degree like 49 degree centigrade was uh, ideal and what were the outliers say the temperature spiked at 60 degree centigrade right that's your descriptive statistics or descriptive analytics right now temperature spiked up to 60 degree when the average was 50 something might be wrong right so that forms a part of the diagnostic analytics like i tell like why it is going wrong say maybe the temperature there was a fuse malfunction uh, or something like that that's diagnostic right so the next stage is obviously predictive analytics what do i do now i know 60 degree centigrade is bad right 51 is good now suddenly see my temperature starts spiking right and it goes beyond 55 degree centigrade I'll turn off the furnace at 55 because I know at 60 degree there is a failure and I know this failure is caused by temperature fluctuations that's predictive analytics right so the next step to predictive analytics what is that prescriptive right so you say you prescribe to the company that okay your temperature is going to above 55 degree quite often so install a regulator a voltage regulator that's prescriptive analytics you see how we incrementally added value to the organization this is what we uh, target our use cases also on okay now i'm not going to bore you with like the different types of data sets and the other things but rather let's make things interesting right we talked about like uh, machine learning deep learning what are they what are they these are just techniques of doing all the things that we discussed first right so what are the, some of the use cases i'll take you through that i worked on uh, you will realize right so ever seen anybody draw blood from you very common right people draw blood from you perform biological tests right pathologist now this branch is called as immunohistopathology those of you who have been in biology you might have done it I didn't do it i was not a biology student but still interesting enough right i uh, actually pathologists take around like eight years of expertise and with their help i can translate this to machine learning or to a computer vision problem within like six to seven months this have been i have done with Roche and other places like we augmented that so what can we do based on this immunohistopathology from the blood sample we can do virus classification we can see whether a cancer treatment is efficient or not and this is what we do on your screen you will see different kinds of virus and their images under the microscope now supposedly every sample think about it deadly viruses like ebola a pathologist in full gear has to go and see okay that's an ebola virus okay that is a concentration of it what if I, I can automate this entire process, right? It's just seeing the virus, right, under a microscope and identifying it. That's what AI can do for you guys. You see on your right, all these viruses have been, uh, like, detected by an uh, AI algorithm. You can see the precise quantity, the different types of viruses, and you will also see the uh, data set, like the data present on your screen. Similarly, we also did like uh, cell segmentation, nuclei detection, cancer cell detection. The use cases are N number. 
and all you need to do is translate it you need to translate real world problems that you have into machine learning problems and deep learning problems that's all you need to do define it once you define it python is so simple that once you know you can design an algorithm like this within uh, within 10 lines of code all you need to do is generate load a model you can predict so on your screen you have a model of people in a subway and i am basically counting like how many people are passing through it anybody can take a guess like what kind of problems i can solve with this anyone i will tell you what kind of problem i can solve with this i can basically solve problems like uh people in uh, like a mall like the foot count footfall of a mall i can solve problems like uh, social distancing which was one of the things that we did at bangalore international airport during my time in bosch we can implement n number of solution in fact do you know why walmart is one of the biggest supply chains so they came up with a innovative solution like stacking do you think like when you go into a shopping mall like dmart costco or like walmart are the products just arranged randomly they are not they are arranged in a very unique fashion based on model predictions based on recommendation optimization algorithms to make you buy them you will always see uh, like next time you go into like say dmart i don't say in germany at least if you see if you go to a mall beers are generally kept next to a diapers right now you may ask what is the correlation between it as human beings we cannot see that correlation right diapers next to beer does not make sense but apparently walmart discovered that german fathers before their holiday weekend they used to pick up diapers for their kids because everything is closed on sunday and saturday they just chill out right so what's the number one thing that comes to male mind like when they see a beer they buy it so they just put them next to each other this is one of the ways wherein you are marketing your product subconsciously if you see facebook meta uh, uh, sorry meta or uh, like take for example tesla tesla is a data company basically it's developing ai algorithms for people detection it is now doing neural link which is basically mapping the brain impulses and number of things geo which is basically managing your data patterns and other things so everything boils down to data and with that data the kind of problem you want to solve will depend on whatever you want to solve whatever you want to come up with you want to count the number of people design it you want to solve the problem of route optimization like which paths a person should take in case of like traffic jams you can solve it if you want to do like uh, supply chain and demand in fact do you know back in the 90s uh which is a number one ai uh, use case company in india anybody take a guess anyone ai what did you say uh, so uh, can you name one company that has been using ai and predictive modeling for the last 20 30 years in india an indian company sorry uh, yeah hi. sorry kajal navina navina any guess yeah. yeah i think it's facebook facebook actually you guys might be surprised to know right. that facebook was not even right. invented back then so yes. it's asian In tech 90s. 1990s before i was tata. even born tata tata no not tata but uh, yeah tata. Uh, well i'll give the answer asian paints look it up asian paints developed a predictive model way beyond its time now if a pay, particular color of paint is going to end up in a particular shop asian paints delivers it within half an hour it can predict which paints are required which is the most popular paint that's going to sell and everything look it up i'm not joking about it asian paints invested in that technology and that's why it's a market leader in indian paint company it knows that when a particular uh, franchise is going to run out of a particular paint type 
it knows which pain type a particular customer is going to purchase and it knows everything obviously so it's AI? yeah it's definitely AI. it's machine learning model it's I machine mean, learning they invested, they invested in the coloring scheme that I know. but in 90s there was ai i didn't know that yes there was in fact uh, uh, the deep learning uh, neural network algorithms predate us maybe our parents also neural networks oh. were invented in 70s during the cold war era in fact the first uh, line following robots they were developed uh, image based uh, robots they were developed in 65s by darpa uh, they were part of initiative called as deep mouth uh, i think uh, but most of this were military implementation if you see world wide web was also a military implementation a lot of crazy stuff happening then but why we are hearing ai ml now that's a question because if you see this algorithms were pretty expensive to implement like hardware expensive right and over the recent years only our hardware is matching up it has that kind of strength wherein we can train algorithms otherwise earlier people uh, only government could do that or uh, huge corporations could do that when they had like massive amounts of ram or uh, huge supercomputer kind of systems but now everyone has like access to an nvidia gpu but still i will tell you one thing ask any industry expert can he train an llm at his home he cannot in fact for microsoft it was a big investment like you must be hearing about chat gpt right chat gpt costed around i think roughly 1.4 to 5 billion to train that's gpt 2 or 3.5 i don't remember that's that's a cost to train an algorithm it needed specifically like a enormous amount of nvidia G gpus so GPU is something that you will hear a lot. And as we go into deep learning, we'll learn that. But as I said, we have been doing this stuff for a while now. And that's why we have arrived. There is no other uh, uh, co uh, country apart from the Western countries that is doing this much of AI ML work apart from China. If you see, we are next to China in the number of papers. We are the second, I think, in the number of technical papers published. Right see that there, there's from arun like in 1960s and 70s in fact most of the thing that you see today we are eventually catching up we are uh, we are at the forefront of it so i'm quickly gonna play a very brief video like what ai ml looks like and uh, basically let me expand this not very good at this stuff so as i said i come from a research background where a lot of this is not given much of importance here it is. Is audio um So to give you a very brief idea, what you're seeing over here is a very advanced form of AI that we are implementing nowadays. What you saw was facial de uh, detection for security purposes. You saw logistics management on the terminal, on the hangars, like uh, people uh, like whether there is some obstruction or not. You can see like density counts, like what is a volume. You can see abandoned packages from security purposes, like where they are. So you need to look around yourself and everything and anything that you see today humans are doing, any mundane tasks, 
AI can easily take care of it. Think about biologics. Why do you think we were able to develop a COVID vaccine that soon? Because we were able to isolate the protein from it using imaging algorithms. A lot of it played a very great role in our fight against COVID as well. Virus detection, virus classification, uh, say for manufacturing like uh, visual quality inspection, whether they are dense or not, all these are AI ML based use cases. But these are primarily imaging use cases. What else? We can also have Excel data in tabular form, right? You can have machine learning, deep learning, anything that you want to solve and you can solve it. You have natural language use cases like those of you who have not yet used ChatGPT. I encourage you to use ChatGPT and you can find out how powerful it is. Our algorithms are becoming more powerful than us. There are humanoids. There are actual uh, ammunitions, loitering ammunitions in the war field now. There are drones. Everywhere you look around yourself, you will find infinite number of AI, ML and deep learning and a lot of use cases like it's everywhere. It's an automate uh, automotive. Like when you go into a shop floor in an automobile plant, you will observe there are a host of robots, uh, robots welding, painting, doing all that stuff. And how does it do that within the inches of like, uh, like a, a millimeter of precision? It's all robotics, AI, ML, IoT. In banking, I would say, uh, how does your bank know whether uh, a, a charge on your credit card that's fraud or not? That's fraud detection churn modeling whether you will leave a bank or not finances insurance life sciences like uh, ai ml in uh, life sciences like uh, cardiac uh, like image guided therapies like surgeries being performed on your eyes how do you think that is done that's using ai ml so it is everywhere you guys i don't know maybe you are freshers you might be working in industries and if you are working in the industry every task that you do there is a lot more efficient way of doing it. You are SMEs probably. You can coordinate your effort to build a better algorithm for it. So, to sum it up, AI ML is one of the best things to pursue in our 21st century. In the current period of time, with the current advancements in the hardware, we can invest and we can develop our skill sets. And just like the 70s and the 90s revolution of IT, we are here to take charge of the AI revolution of future. And you can see the maximum number of LLM products, large language model based products. We are actually in a head to head race with China and US for developing applications based on LLMs. A lot of companies have already developed it and we are also in the process of it. So the question is, do you want to take charge of your future and you want to develop something that counts or not? so that's a very brief presentation uh job titles obviously arun run you uh, ran you through like what data scientists do uh what uh basically are analysts and data scientists basically analysts uh, basically are on the business side i would say they also have in-depth knowledge of the data science ai ml processes but they are more in tune with the management wherein their focus is primarily on the descriptive analytics uh, prognosis building and as well as the visualization part now obviously when I am uh, data engineers who are they like obviously it's written like database administrator and data architects right but they understand the data they provide us with the data like say I said I operate on like uh, data which uh, has trillion rows now the first time I saw that trillion data set there's no way Excel is loading that up, right? So data engineers take care of it. They set up Hadoop clusters. We have Elastic Map Reduce uh, to uh, process through the data, develop our algorithms. That's all data engineers. So anytime you see a data engineer, give them hats off, all right? And the data scientists, that's where we come in. Now, data scientists are more risk oriented. Uh, our primary skill set lies in mathematics, programming, less communicating. Like sometimes we need to give the solutions. Because when you become a data scientist right now, the industry, at least the IT industry is not that mature. So you will have to tell your managers, your delivery managers, your directors, even like I do work with VPs who have use cases like it's everywhere. 
it's an automate uh, automotive like when you go into a shop floor in an automobile plant you will observe there are a host of robots uh, robots welding painting doing all that stuff and how does it do that within the inches of like uh, like uh, a millimeter of precision it's all robotics ai ml iot in banking i would say uh, how does your bank know whether uh, a, a charge on your credit card that's fraud or not that's fraud detection churn modeling whether you will leave a bank or not finances insurance life sciences like uh, ai ml in uh, life sciences like uh, cardiac uh, like image guided therapies like surgeries being performed on your eyes how do you think that is done that's using ai ml so it is everywhere you guys i don't know maybe you are freshers you might be working in industries and if you are working in the industry every task that you do there is a lot more efficient way of doing it you are smes probably you can coordinate your effort to build a better algorithm for it so to sum it up ai ml is one of the best things to pursue in our 21st century in the current period of time with the current advancements in the hardware we can invest and we can develop our skill sets and just like the 70s and the 90s revolution of it we are here to take charge of the ai revolution of future and you can see the maximum number of llm products large language model based products we are actually in a head to head race with china and us for developing applications based on llms a lot of companies have already developed it and we are also in the process of it so the question is do you want to take charge of your future and you want to develop something that counts or not so that's a very brief presentation uh, job titles obviously arun run you uh, ran you through like what data scientists do uh, what uh, basically are analysts and data scientists basically analysts uh, basically are on the business side i would say they also have in depth knowledge of the data science ai ml processes but they are more in tune with the management wherein their focus is primarily on the descriptive analytics uh, prognosis building and as well as the visualization part now obviously when i am uh, data engineers who are they like obviously it's written like database administrator and data architects right but they and the data they provide us with the data like say i said i operate on like uh, data which uh, has trillion rows now the first time i saw that trillion data set there's no way excel is loading that up right so data engineers take care of it they set up hadoop clusters we have elastic map reduce uh, to uh, process through the data develop our algorithms that's all data engineers so anytime you see a data engineer give them hats off all right and the data scientists that's where we come in now data scientists are more risk oriented uh, our primary skill set lies in mathematics programming less communicating like sometimes we need to give the solutions because when you become a data scientist right now the industry at least the it industry is not that mature so you will have to tell your managers your delivery managers your directors even like i do work with vps whom i have to tell like we should prototype a solution like this we should build it like this and that's where you have the complete confidence i can assure you no other field would have that much confidence from their directors and managers to deliver apart from us so being a data science is not just lucrative it's also a role that brings you high levels of visibility and can enable you to move the uh, corporate ladder very fast salaries will obviously come as you climb the corporate ladder and uh, as i said we do draw a very lucrative salaries we are actually the top preferences by most companies and uh, if you <laughs> i mean if you crack an interview in google or microsoft your uh, bonuses alone would be something that is more than a java developer's yearly income so that's a parity i want to draw right so with that i'll take you through a video uh, of how artificial intelligence and things change the world and let's go ahead and see that
so that was a very brief on uh, what we can achieve how a connected world would look like and if you see government of india's initiatives also about smart cities this is what you will see in the upcoming years every device connected every device uh, transmitting data every device you might have heard of reports like uh, apple devices says where, saves wearer's life by detecting an early heart attack or say collision detection in train systems preventing accidents everything would be eventually be controlled by ai ml augmented at least there will always be a need of ethical human intervention that's for sure because uh, there's an increasing consensus that ai ml will take our jobs no that's not the case ai ml will augment jobs obviously you can see i'm not uh, i've developed algorithm which only help pathologists which helps surgeons which helps the normal public policies uh which helps a climate activist right but ai ml has always to be used in an ethical fashion because uh if you see like if ai can be used for good ai can also be used for bad that's another thing which i'll be teaching you that's from me ethical ai basically so i do understand you will be doing facial recognition i'll teach you some skill sets where if like you go into an interview and say like i did facial recognition they're gonna reject you straight away that's one industry thing no one talks about because you are not supposed to collect facial data so how do i do it i do key point detection and i detect 47 points of the face and i can only detect that you should ideally obfuscate faces that's what you see in videos right so ethical use of ai is also the need of the hour uh, so that's something that uh, i will try to build in you reinforce on you uh, as we go through the course uh, I'll also teach you how to use constructively and uh, obviously one thing that I want to make very clear your learning curve will keep on going till the end of your career AI ML is very easy to get in it's very easy to stay in but at the same time it demands work continuously throughout your career as a data scientist you will be going through technical papers from researchers and you will be building yourself that's why the title of scientist it's no ordinary title and trust me when i say it i mean it you will be going through papers to find out the efficient way on what works on a particular data based on somebody and it's one of the best fields to be in and i'll tell you the reason why i joined aiml I was already a full stack developer within the first year of my career and I was lucky that I was on site and my boss decided me to introduce you to to me to AI seeing the potential in me and I picked up on that opportunity and since that day I on an average read 10 papers like uh, every week I think for implementation purposes and that's why I am very much apprised of the current ongoings and as and as you keep on reading you keep on doing stuff like python would be very easy i can assure you guys i can assure you guys the only reason why people quit on aiml is not because it is tough because it is demanding it is demanding because it requires you to put in that effort to read the papers to keep yourself apprised like llms for instance right chat gpt it came and it completely disrupted the eco space right people who could write codes were now re left redundant because uh, uh, chat gpt can do that right but can chat gpt do it without a proper prompt you must have heard a person earns around 20 lakhs by just teaching prompt engineering right so ai ml is very easy at the same time it is very diverse because in my career of 10 years i have never encountered two same use cases i have never worked on it but if you ask any java developer any front-end developer anyone what did you work on today yeah man i just developed a front-end i designed some middleware i designed something the answer would be generic over the years going on and on and on i i cannot even remember which was the first use case that i worked on in fact hell i don't even remember the last use case that i worked on because my current use case is completely different so that will be the joy that ai ml will bring in your life 
right so with that i will open myself up to questions i will try to pacify your doubts as my seniors did when i was starting out and please feel free to ask me any questions there are no bad questions there are no silly questions the only silly question is the question that you did not ask so with that i open the floor ask away so hi dhruva yeah thank you this is lokendra yep hey hi lokendra so dhruva uh, uh, i have a couple of like uh, when i thought about this thing that i should make my career in this uh, domain or what should i say in this data science part so there are a couple of questions so, which are haunting me from like uh, two or yeah. three weeks okay sure. so i come from a commerce background okay i have okay. done my bachelor's in back in 2016 okay okay then i was with uh, Gen, with uh, mnc called as a genpack okay, okay i was there for seven years and okay. i was like a management trainee over there okay. working in an ic position okay, okay. then uh, like i thought uh, it's not going worth for me so i should switch my career in a different part so okay. i have a question for you like hmm. coming from a commerce background getting into a, that tech field is it easy for me to cope up around these kind of things or programs uh initially it will be a tough i won't lie because python would take mm -hmm. some getting used to you will have to code for approximately an hour a day each because i'll tell you why the reason for it is mm -hmm. not because uh, the project they ask you to deliver that's going to be hard but during the interview mm -hmm. they might ask you to write codes right certain simple codes right so that's easy mm -hmm. now coming to the second part about your background lokendra if you don't mm -hmm. mind asking me since i like to answer it personally uh what mm -hmm. kind of tasks do you handle in our daily basis in commerce background if i might ask no there is nothing related to if i have worked for that company uh, there was nothing related to commerce background it was a different domain working for commercial lending and leasing commercial into operation into operations right so into mm -hmm. operations i am basically assuming there are a lot of documents right yeah there are documents there are documents so basically if i say uh, lokendra you take a document and you summarize it for me right mm -hmm. so you will go through the document and you will summarize it say i tell you mm -hmm. to do it for 10000 documents will you be able to do it in like one week or so no no right not that. no right mm -hmm. but if you develop a program specifically uh, basically an nlp natural language processing algorithm it can do that mm -hmm. job for you so the job that you do ai will just augment it so just don't think of it like i'm from commerce background i cannot do it if i had given that thought process like i am not from medical background i cannot solve a cancer problem basically i am working mm -hmm. on breast cancer research right now worked with uh, lung cancer probably i know more terminology than a intern in uh, st john's hospital probably i worked with them so much so your background will only make you more powerful in this domain that's my what i'm trying to hint at your background makes you powerful in this domain because once you learn that coding thing uh you will be mm -hmm. able to like translate you will be able to see the problems and now you know like okay i can implement a solution like this and it can be done that shows initiative on your part uh coming to programming i won't lie you will have to put in some effort but that's true for every one of us because uh this is not uh, this is very simple programming but at the same time it is very diverse programming how because in this you are not developing a, like a ui ux platform or something like that you are implementing things which like nobody if you give a java developer also he won't be able to do it so that mm -hmm. needs some acumen like getting used to like pandas getting used to numpy getting used to scikit learn basically three mm -hmm. important packages they, that is all there is in python coding obviously practice makes mm -hmm. a man perfect that's the saying as you yeah. say and uh, i understand when i was also starting out i had to practice like really long but you have an advantage now uh, you can rely on uh, google back then the network connectivity was not very good back in my day but mm -hmm. now you have 4g available everywhere make use of it and uh, most of the codes that uh, say for instance like uh, let me share my screen shared right so basically oh. you say uh yeah uh, image classification um mm -hmm. code right? 
uh, and you'll see image classification using keras see one two three four five done that's it that's a code that's a model train a train to predict whether an image is that of a car or a plane right you have that advantage it's not rocket science it is very easy the only problem uh, wherein you will have to custom write your code that is during data processing and data cleaning apart from that everything else is present but now if that is there what is there to mm -hmm. learn right the thing to learn is how to implement what to implement and that's where okay. your background will come into picture that's and if you don't have that background as well for every one of you say you don't have a background mm -hmm. in healthcare or manufacturing and you're given a use case you connect with the domain expert of that there are times wherein i have sh slept at the shop floor uh, in tata um, ball bearing in kharagpur i've slept with the workers over there like uh, like how does this work how does this work where should i place the camera that kind of stuff so it's very interesting and it's very diverse you get to work with everyone so don't be worried about it we will take care of it mm -hmm. uh, obviously if you need more attention you hit uh, you tell me uh, i'll be with you uh, take extra time we'll go through your codes uh, we will get you there that's as simple as saying that yeah shami <laughs> your question thank you <laughs> sir i am a teacher in inter college okay so there is a there is a question that how can i use this data science in a education uh data science in education uh yes, sir. ever saw your uh, students escaping from the back door yes sir huh? ever uh, yes, sir, ever yes, sir. Observe, sir? you saw right so you can implement a yeah. camera based solution to take attendance you can find out how many people are joining uh, in you can uh, yes, yes, transcribe sir. so say you are speaking right you and me we are speaking right you we can transcribe yeah. that entire conversation using nlp and we can provide it to them you can okay, do okay. your paper correction using like uh, natural language processing so uh, in fact the earliest used methodologies are ocr like you remember in iit j we had like we had to circle yeah, yeah, the ocr dot. ocr uh, optical, optical character optical Russian, character, uh, character recognition yes, yes. big concept yes, yes, yes. that's a rack and all that so in the education sector obviously we are seeing a lot of uptick uh yes. we are uh, we obviously work because in the educational sector you have a uh, like uh, say for uh, uh, my professors at isc bangalore also they always keep up coming with unique yes, yes, solutions yes. like how to improve something how to improve the delivery yes. method obviously uh, so the chances of that, uh, the opportunities are enormous i would say obviously uh, uh, if you are working as a lecturer, I'm, uh, I must say, like the opportunities for you to go into research, get a grant. I know a lot of professors who get a grant. Uh, I work with them sometimes. Uh, get a grant from the government and work on them along with the students. Like it's it's yes, a yes. completely different domain that frees you up a lot. I would say, Shami. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anyone else? Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Okay, we will take. Sorry, yeah, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, Tushar, tell me. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Tushar. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, actually, basically, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, okay. I'm having 16 years of experience. Actually, I have worked as project manager in uh, two or three MNCs. So okay. my expertise are uh, construction field. In uh, basically, you can say that uh, uh, construction of substation, construction of new lines, and uh, managing all the data. So mm -hmm. just I want to know from you that uh, how it can be data science will be helpful in my career or in electrical engineering. So just do I want to know that. Okay. So um, uh, Tushar, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, so uh, I'll try to answer it up because uh, of your career level, 16 years. Uh, so right now I have also taken up a role as a consultant, senior consultant, if you say that's basically yeah. a delivery manager kind of a thing. Uh, so as a delivery manager, I would say everyone should know at managerial position to understand about AI ML as a field generic so that he can pitch it to its client that, okay, we have that capability. We have that thought leadership. 
I'll speak strictly from management perspective. Like we need to have, we have that thought leadership wherein we can contribute, we can come in and we can develop the solution for you. Uh, it can be internally within your organization or externally as well. Now in the electrical domain, what kind of work is done? I think I had one offer from an electrical company specifically working in the uh, optical fiber domain. Like, you know, like there is a visual quality assessment and uh, whether the correction, uh, the strength is coming properly or not. That kind of use cases are typical of the electrical industry. Uh, obviously, you will also have a shop floor kind of an environment uh, and you will be doing a lot of PLC and SCADA based work, right? If I'm not wrong, that's basically one of the right, electrical. Right, 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 right. So uh, right. an emerging topic for this is IT OT integration. Now, what is that? So since the advent of humanity, there have been three industrial revolutions so far. We know, right? With the uh, advent of steam engine, that was industrial revolution one, two, three. And now currently India is on a uh, path of industrial revolution 4.0. Uh, that is what we call it, which is basically connected machinery, IT, OT integration. That's what we say. Wherein like uh, your shop floor devices, as you saw on the video as well, like every electrical devices, like uh, everything is going smart nowadays. Why is that? Everything is connected to a server and that performs analytics. So basically you say, for example, this is something that I personally worked on. Like if you all know the Mahindra XUV700, ADAS system, right? That's, that's not the best selling part of it. In fact, most of the people don't know about its latent features. In that electrical systems capture connected to the car scam network. What does it do? It collects the data of the car over a period of time, right? Say your clutch plate is able to wear, uh, is going to wear out. The Mahindra service center will know before the customer itself knows that his clutch plate is going to burn or there is going to be some problem in that. And he's going to prescribe to the customer. You need to visit the shop floor now. Even my car pings me like service due, right? How does it do that? It's not just distance. It is basically okay, checking can, the... can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? Yeah, yeah Tusha. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I am very much agree with you, but you are going in a R and D sector. Uh, what I told that my uh, my expertise are in construction field. So just okay. I want to know that how it can be helpful in construction field. Means construction, construction field. Construction. Uh, PLC and okay. SCADA, you uh, uh, in the, that part, part is okay, but uh, hmm. how it can be helpful in purely construction field? Because I am uh, I am having the experience from the construction field only. So uh, when you say construction commissioning, right? Okay. The erection testing commissioning. Uh, suppose okay, so... if, if, if we are getting a job from a client, uh, first we have to procure the material, then we have to erect it, then properly hmm. we have to test it and commission it, then hand over. This is this is our main job. Okay, so for that again, uh, so a lot of paperwork since uh, you can do a KPI tracking, uh, key performance indicators like whether the since the PO is generated or the CSO customer sales order, it is generated all the way till delivery. You can right, track right, the right, entire right. process. Uh, you can do right. NLP on that. You can get the feedback processes. You can streamline the documentation. You can track it uh, like using different methodologies. Uh, okay, using okay, say, okay. analytics yeah and in addition wherever you see a gap right certain process getting repeatedly deleted again and again uh, delayed like again and again you can implement a solution AI ML based but what that solution would be that is something for you to identify but once you identify it I can give you the tools to uh, rectify it and clear it I hope can I we, made sense. Uh, can, we, uh, can we perform the testing? Uh, suppose we have to test a transformer or a vacuum circuit breaker mm -hmm. by using that mm -hmm. uh, this technology data science or uh, something. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that is uh, That technology is called as digital twin. Let me fire okay. it up for you. So that thing is called as digital twin. So it's an increasingly new concept uh, coming up. So you see in networking, so you said like in an electrical domain, right? In transformers, say, right? right? Transformer um, testing, erection testing, yeah, trans transformer yeah. erection testing, yeah. or record erection testing. Yeah. So here it is, digital twin operating system for HVDC transformers. So I specifically know Siemens works on this kind of technology. You will have a lot of papers yeah. on it. And digital twin is a concept that is not just limited to electrical manufacturing domain, 
it is everywhere in aircraft manufacturing all the way till i know it's a topic that is increasingly getting traction but obviously you know so many be... so many companies are there g electrical is there siemens yes. areva uh, yeah. your uh, another abb yeah. electrical is there yeah. so many companies are there hitachi energy correct, and, uh, correct. so many soft construction companies are yeah. there yeah so uh, if you remember another, the... another another question another question in product line suppose uh, you know that uh, companies um that uh, i don't remember that company uh, suppose phenolex habels and mm. your uh, philips so all are mm. electrical companies so uh, mm. what is the career in uh, product product range means uh, suppose uh, um, habels is manufacturing cable Hmm. So in that uh, domain, how it can be helpful, please explain. So in every company, AIML is being used. So specifically, I have worked with Havels. Uh, Havels, uh, I did like digital twin implementation, as well as I did like uh, this thing, like uh, visual quality inspection. So when a particular product is being uh, created. uh basically uh, uh, to find out whether there is a defect in the form factor or not uh, specifically i also did uh, something called as it was bosch's dedicated device called as phantom uh, which basically performs signal analysis to find whether a machine is in operating idle condition or like whether it is uh, active or not and if it is active like what were the number of parts produced just uh, by using a simple uh, uh, a simulation based system signal analysis like from the electrical signals when we see the patterns and we use butterworth filter all that kind of stuff so in every industry there is a scope every industry is moving towards a ai ml way uh, albeit uh, they are very closed about it what they are doing what they are trying to implement uh, they might be at different levels of maturity because obviously as you say uh, in order to implement digital twin you need to first have a digital thread product information for the last uh, like 5 to 6 years something like that because you need data to train an algorithm so that's uh, uh, any company regardless i cannot comment about all, uh, sorry so sorry excuse me for that i cannot comment about all companies what kind of work they are doing but every company you can rest assured is working on ai ml based use cases because that's going to be the way forward me for that i cannot comment about all companies what kind of work they are doing but every company you can rest assured is working on ai ml based use cases because that's going to be the way forward okay uh yes navina your question thank you thank you thank you very much thank you yeah hi dhruva so hi. i have three questions for you Okay, one thing sure. is it like data science in the market is a kind of bubble but because i have gone through a few research and then i found it like an somewhere it is uh, giving a hint like an it's a uh, sort of current bubble so okay. that is one thing and the second thing consider if i want uh, if i like interested in entering into bioinformatics and i don't belong to the biology background and to provide oh. a solutions for the current existing problems over there doesn't it require a strong domain knowledge uh, to provide a solutions for that it's just because of the coding i uh, do we think that we can i mean I, i don't have the knowledge so that's why i was trying to get it clear so will i be able to provide a solution that is the second thing in the bio, bioinformatics field okay and the third thing is that yeah. is there in a stage in the data science flight uh, mm-hmm. now so far the knowledge i have is like and we'll be using the course which is already available in the libraries or we might be creating a, some a small course or whatever it is being as a non technical guy so mm. in, is there any stage in the data science that we will be pulled apart and like we will be not able to create a code and we have to rely on again our, uh, other team to get into creating a course and then we will be working on that code is there any that stage um, yeah yeah okay so i will take the questions one by one whether it is a bubble or not uh <laughs> to be very honest uh, i see a lot of people enter enter data science domain with the wrong set of expectations as i said i won't comment on the salary part there was a specific reason for that uh most of the people think of data science if i enter this domain i will be able to earn quick bucks and a lot of salary but it is very difficult to sustain it without the proper knowledge set now i know uh, like a lot of people get into courses without putting in the proper work they approach it like any other course they would like java or something okay if i learn this coding that's it i am in 
right? It's not like that. So definitely not a bubble. Definitely a lot of AI ML based use cases being done specifically now because uh, chat GPT has bought the attention of the entire industry. Now, a lot of companies were doing it very quietly. Like I would say AstraZeneca, Philips, Bosch, they were doing it very quietly. If you see top AI companies to work for, Bosch is definitely on that list. And I was doing that five years ago. In fact, I was doing it in Tech Mahindra. The only thing is now it has been into general consciousness. Like every company wants to train all of its people in AI ML, like Accenture, for instance, because they have been left behind in the race. Uh, so definitely not a bubble, but definitely would require a lot of effort uh, from your part. Why? Because uh, as I said, coding is very simple, but on an average, it's an iterative process. You will have to read through 10 papers and you will have to implement it. The second question on bioinformatics, Navina. Uh, yeah. In my 10th standard, I got a C grade in biology. And that's saying something, everyone else got an A grade. So uh, it is very clear that my biology is typically very bad. Okay. Now, bioinformatics is very different because it's mathematics. Now, let me bring you to mathematics. Uh, uh, here's the deck that I was presenting, right? What do you see? Uh, you see mathematics over here, the concentration values as a matrix, right? That's yeah. what you will be operating on. Now, from the domain knowledge, I am definitely not saying that you don't need domain knowledge, but there will be people to help you. So if you specifically go into companies like G, Philips, AstraZeneca, uh, we would either have specialists on board or we will actually go to the hospital. So I remember my time in Philips. I was actually in hospitals like Manipal and Narayan Rudale, wherein people used to tell me, okay, this you this structure that you see, that's a heart. This structure that you see, that's cancer. They will help you with it. After that, you will have to develop the algorithm for it on your own. You will have to read through papers, uh, how to do a specific task, and you will have to follow through. Now, okay. the third question, will we be uh, asked to develop our own code, right? Yeah. That's a question, right? Yes. To summarize yeah. it, that's 99.99% .9 times. You'll be asked to develop your own code. Now, don't get me wrong. There are ready-made things available. You will write your code, but the pre-processing, that's what my uh, mentors explained to me as, and I'll give you the same information. Data science is just 20% modeling, 80% data preparation. The more better you pro uh, prepare your data, the better it is. But it is not very hard. As I had said at the start of the session, if you can see it in your mind, like what I need to do, like for instance, uh, this particular set, right? Uh, take this problem, right? I have this image. I need the cell walls and the nucleuses. So I divide it into black and white image and I divide it. If you can see this ima uh, image in your head, like what I need to do based on your discussions with the SMEs or the doctors, it is two line of code to do it. You will obviously have to research like how to do it, but the coding is not exceptionally tough, Navina. I can assure you no matter what you write, it's never going to be more than 200 to 300 lines of code. Till okay. like five to six years of your experience. Post that, uh, beyond that, why it will be more? Because you will be integrating data engineering stuff, like you will be deploying the model. So that will be a little bit of additional work, but don't worry about the programming bit. It is pandas is very simple. NumPy is chill and scikit-learn is very easy. Your models will always be that. And if you're going okay. for deep learning, uh, I can assure you, like if you go to uh, go and speak to any data scientist, the maximum that he's going to suggest, like for classification, use a ResNet. For uh, <laughs> segmentation, use an UNet. That's it. Efficient net. There are other algorithms as well, definitely. Uh, but, and I will tell you the pros and cons of every algorithm, but trust me, once you've gone through the process, you will not even worry about it. Okay. Got that. Thank you. That yeah. answers my question. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Uh, okay, the time I... has come the session okay. if anybody else is not having any further query it was such an informative illustrative such a wonderful session group thank you so much for that thank you thank so much you. i hope everyone in the session has enjoyed it to the fullest of its content
So the classes will be equally exciting. So join our academic session. Those who are yet to plan for the same. So please do plan early because uh, you will be engaged with a little bit of pre-learning before you hit the actual academic classes next week on your LMS, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. IST, Saturday, Sunday, that is weekend. So plan for it, go for it, and build your uh, bright career, sparkling career under the mentorship of Dhruba. Uh, next module will be taken by uh, Dr. Lakshmi Shri, uh, senior business analyst with 17 years of work experience. Uh, currently, she is in Baharin. So accordingly, we have specialized trainers to take care of different modules based on their own expertise and forte. So hope for, I'm pretty sure, uh, everyone will accomplish your career objective. So on that note, uh, let us wrap the session. Thank you everyone for joining the session, uh, making this session so much uh, interactive, especially Navina, Dushar, Lakendra. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dhruva, for answering to all the audience queries. So uh, time to log off for the day, wrap up the session. Thank you all. Wish you all a very happy learning. Wish you all a very happy weekend. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, Dhruva. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone.